Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes. Celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Well, it's show number 144, and among today's topics from the Irish Head School are, number one, the family of the day is going to be Kinsella. Number two, the online Irish Head School is coming. It's this Saturday. Missouri Irish audio book is released. Number four, Kinchella place name, County Galway. Number five, Chieftains and the San Patricios are coming. Number six, Bernardo O'Higgins is still in South America and well remembered. And number seven, New Irish Ancestor Tracing Service starts up. So it's going to be interesting. we got a lot to think about today. And, boy, I keep remembering those uh, San Patricios. And there's been a couple of videos done on them. And uh, they have parades. And uh, that's worth checking out if you're an Irish historian of sorts in America. Well, let me see our notes for this week. Hey, first, I got to remind you, we have an enhanced podcast, which is like this regular podcast, except it has uh, photographs and links that are embedded in it when you play it, if you have iTunes. So just wanted to remind you of that. And you can subscribe to that on iTunes or from our webpage at irishroots.com. Uh, Take a quick look at the notes for the week. The big launch of uh, our Irish Head School is coming up, and that's the 13th of February. All three hosts of our shows are going to be there, and that's Peter Riley Adams of the History and Song Podcast, Renata of the Hello Fada Irish Language Podcast, and myself, of course. And we'll have workshops on our respective areas of expertise and, of course, uh, That includes uh, genealogy and rare books, uh, rare Irish books, that is. And we're going to have a a joint presentation as well before the workshops and after the workshops. So you got plenty of time to talk to us and uh, pick our brains if there's anything we might be able to to share. And we're going to have a uh, display set up afterwards on travel and, hey, some special Irish Valentine's jewelry that Renata's bringing along. And to say nothing of a possible pub meetup after all is said and done it all depends this is the uh the original and the first launch and uh hey we also had our first practice session uh for the small little uh, band we're putting together that was fun maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that later and uh, hey the online head school is being set up as well i've got a link on the blog <laughs> hey now it's time for the one minute podcast let's take a listen to one of our eight other shows and see what's going on and this one is from the missouri irish book and uh that's because it's our first uh, audiobook release, so I thought I'd put it up here again. Now let's take a listen. Prominent leaders of the day included Patrick Shannon and Colonel James Lillis of County Clare. Lillis was a successful building contractor, and his son Thomas became the second bishop of the Kansas City Diocese. Lillis High School was named for him. Jim Pendergast, born of Irish parents, became a hotel and saloon owner, as well as politician. These new Irish residents of Kansas City settled in two main areas. By 1880, 
500 Irish families had settled in the West Bottoms, which became known as the Irish Patch. Many unmarried Irishmen worked here for a while and moved on. At the same time, 400 Irish families lived near the Missouri River in Old Town, Cherry, Holmes, Charlotte, and Campbell Streets. Both areas could be viewed as slums, which became commercial and industrial areas during this decade. Some of the wealthier Irish moved to Quality Hill, near 9th and Pennsylvania. Some of the poorer Irish moved to Brooklyn Street. Well, now that's just a sample from the book, giving an overview of what I talk about later. And we talk about where the wealthy came from and where the poor came from. And of course, most of those Irish were poor. That's how we all started. And we came to clean the streets and build the roads and tear down the bluffs and uh, start the first new newspapers in Kansas City and St. Louis. And there's quite a history all across the state. And since this is our very first uh, audio book that we're releasing, we've got an audio downline, download online. So if you order that book, you'll be able to download it on M in MP3s on the Internet. So uh, that's sort of fun to figure out how that's all going to work. And it's available for you now. So that's why we picked that as our podcast of the week. Now, in keeping with uh, today's theme, Missouri Irish is the book of the month. And I just wanted to remind you, we've got entire sections covering Kansas City, St. Louis, St. Joseph, Joseph Murphy, and the Murphy Wagon, which helped so many people travel west uh, in the 19th century. It's really quite a story, uh, as big as any I've seen. And, uh, you know, I might talk a little bit about that in the... Uh, Hedge School Sessions this Saturday, if anybody's interested. And I'll bring a couple books along, along too. And, of course, we'll talk about Donnybrook in Missouri and Father Donnelly and uh, John Melanfi, the first millionaire west of the Mississippi, according to our reports. Uh, John O'Fallon, Joseph Charles, the Kansas Public Ledger, uh, the Missouri Gazette, Irishman in them all. Uh, hey, and we're going to talk about Missouri preachers, and there's so many of them that— uh, Several of them have the same name, but they're different people, and they're from Ireland. I think Hogan was one of those. Number two, we saw a book on the uh, Kerwins of County Galway that was on sale, and the Kerwins were one of the merchant tribes of Galway uh, that was of old Irish origins, and uh, I've got a link to that on the blog. That was from Four Courts Press. And we also have two books that I have written on County Galway families and genealogy. And, of course, that's the Families of County Galway, Ireland, which is the larger hardbound wor work, and County Galway Genealogy and Family History Notes, which is really research notes for the serious researcher. I include things like uh, the landed families that had coats of arms in the area, uh, miscellaneous census records, quotes from older sources, uh, it all depends on what you want to do. And, uh, hey, you know, there's three things you have to remember. We've got a podcast, a blog reader, and a blog. So we've got a little bit different things on most of those. So remember, the podcast is the one I narrate and I'm talking to right now. The blog reader is a computer that reads our blog. That's the written show notes for this podcast that I do each uh, each week or every other week. And, uh, and of course the blog is also includes other things other than the podcast show notes. So keep your eyes open. I don't know how we're going to handle the head sh uh, school, uh, uh, blogs, but boy, we're going to have a lot more information coming out in the coming months. And, uh, it's all just like a radio show on the internet available 24 hours a day. Now coming up, we're going to talk about, uh, or give you a link to Bernardo O'Higgins and uh, who was he anyway, and why is he so famous uh, in South America? I thought he was an Irishman, and he was way back there. I don't, how could they have ever even gotten to South America? That's an untold story. Well, that sounds means it's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. Number one, Walter Dove of Washington, D.C., your Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters. The set has shipped to you. 
Number two, Denise O'Brien of Chicopee, Massachusetts. Your Families of County Clare book and Irish Genealogies book has shipped. Number three, Richard McMahon of Coatesville, Pennsylvania. Welcome as a new member. Your book of Irish families, great and small, has shipped. Number four, Raymond Smith of Highland, Utah. Your County Down Genealogy and Family History book has shipped. Uh, number five, Leslie Brown of San Anselmo, California. Your families of County Cork has shipped. A lot of Corkers out there. Number six, Daniel R. O'Neill of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Your County Cork genealogy and family history notes have shipped. See, there's two Cork books in a row. Number seven, Dorothy Kelleher of Ballston Spa, New York. Your County Cork genealogy and family history notes have shipped. Boy, that's three in a row. Cork must be burning them up right now. And that's where so many people left from Queenstown, or as it was otherwise named, Cobe, C-O-B-H. Sometimes you had them, some people stuck a V in there and spelled it C-O-V-E. It depended on history and who was making the maps or writing the letters. Uh, that keeps it all very, very interesting. Remember to check out our search online search list, too. We're getting ready to update that with uh, newer searches, so remember it and Thank you to each and every member. Without you, we'd have no podcast. We'd have no head school. We'd have no research. Thank you a million, and we hope to keep you coming in every week. Well, the family name of the day, we're going to make it uh, Kinsella. Sometimes you look at it as Kinsella. Uh, K-I-N-C-H-E-L-L-A and uh, most people who know a lot of Irish families know some Kinsella's here or there, that's for sure uh, hey, you're also going to see there's a town of Kinculia in Galway near Loch Ray and uh, that's in various records including Griffith's Valuation of Ireland but that's another story I'll talk about uh, in a future podcast today's family history is in honor of uh, Patrick uh it was going to be in honor of Patrick Kinney because I thought he was looking for Kinsella, but he was looking for a name uh, uh, in Kinculia in Galway. So to make a long story short, we're doing uh, Kinsella, and there's all kinds of spellings of the name. It can end up with a L-O-W on the end or a C-H-E-L-L-A uh, or an A-G-H can end that name, and it all sounds the same sometimes depending on who's pronouncing it. I've got a list of those on the blog and they're taken from the guide to the various spellings of Irish family names, and it's group spelling variant spelling groups number 1032 and 1028. And that book's the book I put all the various names I've found and lists that I've found of various spellings of Irish names in actual situations, not made-up ones, uh, and there's thousands upon thousands. Now, if you take a quick look at the history of the name, you'll see that the Kinsella families descend from the famous Dermot McMurrow, or perhaps he's the infamous Dermot McMurrow, because he was the 12th century king of Leinster who helped the Anglo-Norman invasions of Ireland occur by traveling over uh, uh, to the continent and bringing back some uh, nobles there to uh, conquer Ireland, and eventually that led to our whole downfall, known as the Norman invasion. And, uh, of course, McMurrow was the Kavanaugh uh, family was also from the same line along with Kinsella, and that represents two Irish surnames that don't have the O or Mac in front of them, which makes them sort of dis uh, uh, distinct in the olden times. And uh, you're going to find that the family is centered in the barony of Gorey in County Wexford in both olden days and modern times. Uh, references are found in many works referring to the name of this territory as the Kinsellas. And uh, there's more found in the original work. And uh, this is taken a partial extract from the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small. Uh, coming up later in this episode, the, the new San Patricio Battalion is in the making. And we're going to also take a look at Irish family coats of arms from the Irish Book of Arms and see if the uh, uh, Kinsellas are in there. And uh, hey, guess what? They are. A uh, brief search of that book uh, finds the, uh, in the Irish Book of Arms, found, finds them with an illustration in color with a lion passant sable in the lower part of the crest. And that's just for starters. So you're, you made the book, I'm telling you. 
Now we're moving on to sources. Oh, everybody needs sources and we always list them here. We've got a big free list of sources on our webpage. You just type your surname in without a Mac or O in front of it. And a list of the books that your name appears in uh, comes up. <clears throat> and that can be a helpful even if you don't get the book because it tells you what county book we found your name in. And that's especially helpful if you have a rare name. Now, we found Ken Chella in the Birth Index of Ireland and also in the families of uh, County Dublin, Ireland, and in the Irish Book of Arms. Now, Ken Sella, where it's K-I-N-S-E-L-A-G-H, we found in the census of 1659, and Ken Sella in Missouri Irish Book, and O. Ken Sella, the old style spelling in the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters, so that tells you something. And Kinchella is also in the Master Guide to Spellings of Irish Family Names. So there's plenty of uh, tips and leads there. And remember, if you go to our webpage and you do that uh, free search, remember to leave the Mac or O off the front of the name when you're typing in the root name. That'll get you. Uh, get you to all the O's and Macs anyway. We've got it set up all real special for you. And now it's time for the next segment. I bet you know what it is. Uh, what do you think it is? You might be able to tell by this new music. Around the World in Irish Ways, the webpage and videos of the month. Well, number one, here's a house in Kincullia near Loch Ray in County Galway, and it's only 265,000 euros. Boy, that seems like it's a it's a hefty, uh, it's a far draw from the old Irish cottages I see in those movies. I wonder what that's about. Number two, St. Patrick's Battalion is a video of the week, and it's from Ireland to America to Texas to Mexico, and then from Mexico they joined the Mexican Army and fought the... Uh, American Army, can you believe it? And some descendants live yet today. They have a plaque in their honor in Mexico, and they also have parades and celebrations in uh, Mexico and in America. So if you think you know about uh, Irish American heritage or Irish Mexican heritage, you better know about the San Patricios, that's for sure. Number three, the life of St. Bridget, the Abbess of Kildare uh, uh, video. Uh, that's another uh, YouTube video we have since uh, uh, St. Bridget's Day is just right upon us here. And number four, the Vikings versus the Irish. Here's a battle on film. It's a reenactment, and uh, it's a fairly small group of people considering the thousands who fought and died on the real days, but uh, this would be a skirmish, I think. Uh, but that might be fun for you to watch, so we put it on there for you. And, uh, of course, we've got our regular Irish uh, video shorts on Irish genealogy and history. And as soon as I get time, I'm going to make another 10 of them or so. It's just a matter of uh, getting it all done and uh, keep those memberships coming in because it gives me time to stop and record those. Let me know if you see, want to see one on a certain topic, and I'll be sure to get it. for curious news and notes from Ireland today, or mostly so. Here we've got another service to trace Irish ancestors. It says that Howard Kingston of County Wicklow came up with the idea. They will hire experts to trace your tree, and they will also provide lodging and transportation if need be. Or you can drive yourself, and they'll uh, give you a CD of your family sites to see in Ireland. Or at least that's the plan. I've seen some individuals try this before, but apparently this is a a little bit bigger operation. Uh, let me know if you try it. Link on the blog. Number two, February 1st was St. Bridget's Day, and it's a much quieter holiday than St. Patrick's. Hmm, perhaps that means something. She may be coming back into favor, though. It seems like she's getting more attention. And uh, number three, General Bernardo O'Higgins, father of Chile, has been honored again as Chile separates its bicentenary of independence. And there's a broad avenue in Santiago that's named in his honor, and it remains so to this day. So when I said father, father of chili, if any of you guys thought that there was an O'Higgins who had a special chili recipe, uh, 
Wake up. We're in the 21st century. Number four, more Viking settlements are being uncovered in Dublin, it seems like every year. And now they found some 11th century settlements on the north side of the Liffey River. So it looks like they survived that Battle of Clontarf around 1014 after all. We talked about that on our Hedgerow History Podcast. We had quite a group. Uh, we had three or four shows on the Vikings and then a couple on uh, Brian Baru's Rise to Power and then a show on the uh, Battle of Clontar. So be sure to listen to that on our Hedgerow History Podcast. Number five, the San Patricios, the Irish battalion that fought with the Mexican army against the government of the U.S. And they had some reason uh, they were treated pretty poorly by some commanding officers when they got uh, jumped off the ship and thrown into the army down south. So uh, it's a story you should know about. And it was part of the Mexican-American War. And it was around the time of the Irish famine, so things were tough all over. And John Riley of Clifton County Galway was a well-known leader there. And they still commemorate the event in Mexico and America and they have some very interesting Mexican-Irish names down there. Uh, I've got a link to that on the blog. I've also had, uh, let me see, I've had two videos that were fairly well done uh, little movies on uh, the San Patricios and a book. So uh, there's plenty of information on it. Don't worry about that. I'm sure you can find something on eBay or uh, Amazon immediately, plus this video uh, to give you a start. So that ends the notes from the hedgerow today. You can see uh, our en entire series of notes on all uh, the seven or eight podcasts at irishroots.com. Advertisers and sponsors are welcome. I hope to see you Saturday at the launch of the Irish Head School. We're going to have some good old-fashioned fun and learning and singing and uh, history right there for you. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs>